I know, what in the name of all that's good and proper on God's green earth am I doing inside a Toyota SUV? And a really big one at that. Well, it's a Toyota Land Cruiser Prado VX Limited, which means I get a little piece of wood on my steering wheel here, some leather under my bum, and a few other nice little pretty bits inside. But the main appeal of this car for me is the fact that it's still with us, it's still on our roads. And this is a 2018, but its DNA can be traced directly back to 2009, which is like prehistoric in vehicle terms. So I want to know what is the enduring appeal of the Land Cruiser. And the only real way to find that out is to drive the beggar. The only engine that's available in the Prado now is a 2.8 litre four cylinder diesel. It puts out 130 kilowatts and 450 newton metres of peak torque. Now, not huge numbers and they are a little low for something that weighs 2,385 kgs. Having said that, it does get along okay if you're patient. It's very quiet, it's very comfortable, it's very smooth riding, it's very characterful. Part of that character comes from that four-cylinder diesel engine. It's reasonably vocal, but it's a pleasant noise. It's quite of a, a comforting partner to have along with you. And you can check on the vehicle's loading and ease with its terrain and the current gear or whatever you're, you're driving across simply because that engine speaks to you. Behind that 2.8 litre diesel is a six speed automatic transmission. It's fairly conventional, there's no paddle shifters, you can move it into a, a self selecting mode, but why would you? I mean, there's no real satisfaction or increased speed to be gained by self-selecting gears. Maybe when you're in off-road mode, yes, you could use the self-selector more efficiently. Now I know what all your car nuts really want to hear. Is how does it sound under hard acceleration? Not fantastic. The windy roads like I'm on now, you can certainly feel the Land Cruiser's bulk. But it's not onerous to deal with. The steering's nice and light. There's not a whole bunch of body roll. Mainly, you're noticing that the tires are got a, a really tall sidewall to them. But everything's sort of well calibrated to travel you around you know, in the right frame of mind. You can't drive it like a sports car. Well, you can try, but you're going to be really, really disappointed and probably really, really scared. So treat it like it's designed to be treated, which is a very versatile, go anywhere with everything on board type of vehicle. And it's a real delight to be in, actually. I'm not going particularly fast, I'll admit, but I don't have a desire to go fast. You know, some cars, they have quick throttles and lots of sporting potential in their chassis and you want to push them to the limits to, to find out how fast you can go. But you don't have that desire in the Land Cruiser. You, you don't want to be in a hurry. Of course, a big part of the appeal of the Land Cruiser for many buyers is its ability off-road. It's got all the oily bits that they could want. A full ladder chassis with anti-roll bars that decouple in off-road situations to allow extra axle articulation. They've increased the approach angle on this new version by shaving off a little bit of the, the lower front parts of the bodywork. It can traverse a 42 degree slope that way and it can also up and down 42 degree slopes as well. It's got hill descent control, five different crawl speeds where you can adjust it to just motor itself along over really tricky little obstacles without having to trouble yourself with the accelerator. You can lower or raise the air suspension at the rear to clear certain obstacles. It's got a 700 millimeter weighting depth, locking center diff. You can have it start off in second gear. It's got a multi-terrain system where you can fine tune what surface you're driving over into the car's computers. So for off-roaders who want to take the family into the, the gluggy and hard to reach places of the planet, Land Cruisers is ideal. I'm not actually supposed to be off-road in this vehicle. It's on loan to me from Toyota. 
uh, and I'm not going to take it into uh, areas where it's likely to get damaged but I thought only fair that we have a little bit of four-wheel drive footage in the video so yes ladies and gentlemen it actually is a four-wheel drive and it does go uh, through puddles and through sand good You have the choice of five drive modes, Echo, Comfort, Normal, Sport, <laughs> and Sport Plus. <laughs> you can forget about Sport and Sport Plus in my experience because all it seems to do is harden up the suspension and provide a bit of a jiggly ride, which is quite out of character with this vehicle. And what is the character of this vehicle? Hey, it's a Land Cruiser. It cruises the land. That's why people have bought Land Cruisers and that's why people continue to buy Land Cruisers because there's nothing quite like this thing for climbing up into, settling in with six friends perhaps and just cruising. The front seats are heated and cooled, the rear seats have their own air conditioning, they also have their own Blu-ray DVD player and behind the rear seats there's another couple of seats which can electronically be raised up out of the floor and accommodate, yeah, actually an adult. There's even a little heavily convexed mirror up here so you can see all the people. Jeremy, you leave Melissa's pigtails alone. It does have autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian assist, but heaven help any pedestrian that gets whacked by this. I've got a feeling that uh, big groove in the middle of the bonnet on this version which looks like the guttering down the side of a, a bowling alley will just help your pedestrian's head roll nice and neatly right up the center line of the vehicle mm. yes ninety two thousand dollars is a lot of money and it buys you a lot of other options to consider and some of them will invariably be better on road than this and some of them will be faster and some of them will have more technology inside or a, a higher specification but when you look at the Land Cruiser Prado and take it for a drive I've got a feeling it's going to get into your head like it's got into mine it's just unpretentious trusty reliable and it just becomes a bit of a friend now those attributes might not sound that exciting but if you're buying a vehicle for the long haul like several hundred thousand kilometers you still can't really go past a Land Cruiser Prado.